many years ago I was covering the Gulf War uh, for the Toronto Star and uh, I was in Saudi Arabia, Kuwait and Iraq and uh, in those days uh, they had the uh, pool uh, journalism uh, concept and the Americans didn't want anybody who was not approved to be on the front lines and, and uh, uh, so I and uh, an American reporter and a British reporter and an American photographer uh, teamed up and we just drove around uh, the battlefield and had all these amazing stories. We were determined to get to Kuwait City before anybody else and uh, one night uh, we had befriended the Egyptian army which were the good guys, they were heading into Kuwait and uh, we traveled with them with bombs and things falling all around us. Uh, had to dig a latrine uh, one night uh, and stopped digging it when a, uh, some sort of mortar fell near me. We got to a certain point uh, in the middle of the night, um, imagine the landscaping, a desert, and uh, there's you know, the tanks are sort of burning around there because they were Iraqi tanks that the American bombers had, had destroyed and there's a blue flame coming out of them, which was, I guess the metal actually burning. And uh, the Egyptians said, we're stopping, we can't go any farther. And we said, well, what the, we have to, our bosses want us to get to Kuwait City first. And uh, they were working with an American Special Forces guy, a captain who was a pretty cool guy. And he said, well, look, boys, if you go this way and then you kind of go through a minefield and turn left, you'll hit a main road and that's the road to Kuwait City. So, so good luck to you. And uh, minefield sounded interesting. We headed off. Uh, we saw what were appeared to be uh, mines and I got out and uh, walked uh, uh, under the moonlight uh, guiding our truck. Uh, my best friend Paul McEnroe from the Minneapolis newspaper, he said, well, I'm not going to let Donovan have the, uh, the glory of walking ahead. I'm going to walk ahead too. The, the goal of walking ahead was so we all wouldn't blow up. Uh, anyways, we made it to this road and uh, we got in our car and we started uh, driving. Uh, Toyota 4Runner, I think I recall, and uh, and then we got to a fork in the road, um, and all around us was the signs of, of war and uh, you know tanks again that were burning and, and you know people in distress, and uh, we didn't know which way to go because we didn't speak Arabic, we didn't know if it was left or, or right, and uh, we decided to go right, and uh, as we headed off on the road, um, we saw. Uh, in the distance, a, a tank moving towards us, and we stopped. We heard over top of us uh, what's called an A-10 Warthog, which is a, a big uh, lumbering plane that is a tank killer. Um, and we thought we better get out <laughs> because we're going to get blown up here. Uh, so we got out. Now we're going the wrong way. We're going into the war, and people are fleeing the other way. So we got out, and um, all of a sudden we saw another tank coming, and the the tank uh, approached us. Uh, we were sort of cowering in, by an old burned out um, uh, car dealership on the outskirts of Kuwait City. And uh, we heard, uh, I'm not going to say it on camera, but we heard a, a, the word begins with F. And it sounded like an American. And approaching us uh, was a tank um, with a bunch of American soldiers in it. And they were saying, like, what the F are you guys doing here? Uh, I think they figured out we were journalists. And we said, well, we're here trying to get to Kuwait City. And they said, do you know that there's a tank that's about to uh, shoot you? And by the way, do you know that we almost lit you up? And uh, so, make a long story short, uh, he said to, to us, well, we're going to take care of that tank. And the, his tank went off and blew up this Iraqi tank, which was approaching on us. Um, they made us follow them all the way back to their uh, forward base. We, we um, uh, spent a couple of hours there, um, one of the most uh, wildest night I've ever spent because the American medics went to get the men who were not killed in the Iraqi tank and carried them back on stretchers and so we got to go in and watch these Americans who had just shot these guys save their lives and there was one guy who had a piece of um, metal sticking out of his forehead uh, some shrapnel and he um, I watched him die in front of my eyes. He sat up in what's called the decorticat posturing. His hands sort of went like this as he died. Um, they buried him um, just behind their tent, and then a, um, a tank accidentally drove over that area later that night. Uh, then we met Captain Franz Behrens, who was the guy who a few hours before had had us in his sights, and he said, boys, um, my orders from my colonel were to kill you. Um, we thought you were Iraqis, and he said, I disobeyed an order. I'm going to get in shit for it, but uh, he met us and um, he ended up coming to my wedding uh, the next year actually because um, we forged this friendship. 
So he said, you're clear to go. You guys, journalists, you want to go to Kuwait City? Go for it. Just go that way, turn left. So we get in our truck, the four of us, we're really excited that dawn is breaking and we head off. And if you can imagine driving along the 401 with that uh, uh, concrete uh, divider between the two sides, I saw the concrete divider I was driving in front of me disintegrate. We were going about 80 kilometers an hour and we, I hit the brakes, we stopped and we looked over and we saw a, um, a Humvee, this was the first year for the Hummer, uh, with a huge 50 caliber machine gun on it, uh, U.S. Marines. Um, although the way had been cleared for us, the 2nd Armored Division where Captain Franz Behrens uh, worked, their radios don't talk to the Marines. Marines thought we were the bad guys, so they had um, uh, fired, we thought, just to, to warn us. We went and talked to them uh, with our hands up in the air and, he's, and I said, uh, that's pretty cool, you're able to shoot in front of us. And he said, I missed, I was shooting at you. You guys are cleared to go though. <laughs> gas attack. A few kilometers down the road we have to stop again, put on our gas mask. And that was the most terrifying thing I've ever done because I'd never actually had a gas mask on. In those days there was concern that there was going to be Iraqi uh, uh, gas attacks and it's really hard to breathe in that, you know, we were all sort of excited. Finally we're cleared to go and we made it to, uh, to Kuwait City and, and got an amazing story out of it.